Aloha, everyone. Welcome back to Multifamily Live. Super excited to have Marcus Long with us today. Hey, Marcus. Hey, Feely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you uh, sharing the space. Well, I appreciate you joining this space. Marcus has been a longtime friend, member of Seven Figure Multifamily, and he's been a coach for us for the last year. I wanted Marcus to come on here and share a little bit of, about his story. So Marcus, why or how, first let's say how, did you get into real estate? And if you want to give us a little bit of that why, please do. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's uh, going back about 19 years to my initial uh, getting into real estate. So, uh, you know, I'm a, and now I'm a, a husband, a father of two and a retired naval officer. And so the, how I got into to real estate kind of goes back to my, my naval career. Um, I had enlisted in the Navy right out of high school. Um, I'd been selected for a commissioning program and went back to the University uh, of Missouri. And during that time, I bought a, a three bed, two bath condo and house hacked it before I knew what house hacking was. And I uh, kept it as a, a rental when I uh, left college and I still own that property uh, today, actually. And so that was the very beginning of my real estate journey 19 years ago. And from there, you know, I think just uh, the, the pieces of the puzzle and seeing the power of real estate kind of started clicking and, you know, I had a, a long journey in um, single family and various other strategies before, you know, as I got closer to the end of my naval career and transitioning uh, out, uh, transitioning into commercial real estate and specifically multifamily. How did you make that transition into commercial real estate, into multifamily? Yeah. So, you know, to, as I approached the last few years of my career and I knew I didn't want to go into a, another nine to five, right. I wanted to do something more uh, entrepreneurial or on my own, but a lot of my real estate stuff had been kind of uh, opportunistic. Um, you know, I just picked up a, a new house or a different property or whatever, every few years. And I knew in order to achieve my own goals uh, financially for my family uh, and stuff that I had to be a little bit more uh, systematic uh, about my approach. And so I started uh, looking at various different strategies and I had started uh, investing passively in multifamily myself. And so just started having some uh, conversations with some of the uh, partners and the uh, sponsors and stuff that I had invested with and, you know, looked at, at multifamily. And that ultimately was the strategy uh, that aligned uh, both for um, our personal, for our family financial goals, as well as for, um, you know, my personal satisfaction and the things that I could, you know, do later on and stuff as well. So tell us a little bit about your journey from when you started getting into large multifamily, when you jumped into seven figure multifamily. I know you had some previous experience, but tell us a little bit about that journey, um, where you started and where you are now. Yeah, so I had uh, just started, you know, a few months prior to joining Seven Figure Multifamily, uh, working on my uh, my first deal as a general partner in multifamily. I think we probably closed that. It was a hundred unit in, in uh, just outside of Tulsa, um, right around the time that I I joined. And uh, you know, some might ask, like, hey, why would you you know join if you were already kind of involved and things like that? And one of the things is like whenever I approached some of my partners, you know, they knew I had some. Um, experience from managing some of our own properties. Uh, I was a, I was a finance major, so you know underwriting doesn't scare me uh, necessarily, and um, a lot of different experience. I, I kind of asked them also, like, hey, from a capital raising perspective, like what would bring value to your team? You know, like kind of what amount uh, would be necessary to raise, and you know they gave me some uh, some amounts there, and that kind of helped me set some goals. You know, to kind of go out and to build my uh, network, uh, an investor network. And so I can bring some other stuff to the table. And, but one of the things I really wanted to do is I made that transition into multifamily. And part of the reason I joined seven figure multifamily was because I wanted to become a stronger partner, right? Like I had started practicing underwriting. Uh, I, you know, had vision of asset management from some of my property management experience and stuff, but I really wanted to, to learn to be a, a much better underwriter, to learn to uh, be a better asset manager and bring more to the partnership. And that's part of the reason I, I joined seven figure multifamily in the first place. To bring more. And in the years that I've known you, Marcus, you have 
exuded that kind of confidence, not only into the group, but into the, your investors and into your social media. You have this certain quiet confidence that lets me know that you're not going to just rest on those laurels. You're going to continue to see how you can how you can grow, how you can challenge yourself and how you can be, like you said, a stronger partner. Cause you know, I completely believe that you should look for strong partners that you should also bring as much of your strength into the partnership as possible. So I would like to dig into that a little bit more, not only to you looking to be a stronger partner, but how and why does multifamily why is multifamily the place where you can find that strength, where people can find that way to help more, to be more, and to do more? Yeah, so, you know, I think that uh, early on, whenever I wanted to, to be a better asset manager and a better underwriter, you know, admittedly, you know, part of me is thinking that, like, also uh, selfishly, like, hey, I'll get more of the, the general partnership uh, percentage and stuff, too. And ultimately, what I what I kind of realized is, you know, some of my partners are, we're in different stages of life and we have different uh, strengths and interests. And, you know, I have an eight and five year old and some of my partners might be single or maybe they're married with no kids and, and different things. And some of these, um, these skill sets are the roles in multifamily, right? So there's, there's, it's a very much a team sport and roles from, from the acquisitions to underwriting, to capital raising, to actually executing the business plan through asset management and what I realized is, you know what, some of my partners are really, really good at acquisitions or some of my partners are very, very good at underwriting or asset management. And, you know, by learning through seven figure multifamily and those skills, I can become a better underwriter. Um, I may not have to be the one that's underwriting all of the deals, right? I can be a better partner by critiquing or putting holes in, in my partner's underwriting, or I can be a better partner because I can you know, understand that underwriting and describe that and educate my investors. Right. And so I think, you know, we don't have to have, there's these various roles and we don't have to be the expert in each one of them. A lot of times we have a, um, I might be really good at talking to people and building relationships with a broker or, or with my investors, but maybe I don't love spreadsheets or, you know, maybe someone has a vision for a business plan or execution of asset management, but they don't necessarily love talking to the potential investors or brokers all the time. But I think when we understand each of those roles and we work closely with our partners, you know, we can, we can really be strong because we can, you know, critique the business plan or provide ideas, you know, that we could um, implement through asset management to make it a better return uh, for our uh, passive investors. Or we can, you know, like I said, relay that information the the underwriting and put that into kind of layman's terms to be able to explain that. Uh, to our investors that might not be, you know, uh, real estate or financial uh, experts. Thank you for that answer. I also want to dig in a, even a little deeper because before we got on, you mentioned, you mentioned multifamily being also a way for, to help your network, to help, help people grow alongside you. In the years that I've gotten to know you, um, I've noticed that you have become um, more attuned to the capital raising side of multifamily. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. So, you know, when, when I made the transition, kind of going back to talking about that transition and stuff, certainly looking at multifamily, you know, as a strategy, there's, um, there's financial and economic and demand uh, perspectives that you look at and it, it being a good like real estate strategy, but for me more like uh, purpose and mission, right? I, you know, here I was uh, transitioning out of the military and, um, you know, for 21 years, you know, it was kind of provided like, here's what your mission is and go and execute. And I think a lot of military, we, we get to that transition point and, we don't necessarily know what our, our next mission or our next purpose is, right? And kind of struggle. And so that's one of the reasons I really started looking um, at multifamily and what my transition plan was a couple of years ago to try to make this, this time smoother for my family and for myself. And through multifamily, I kind of saw, you know, the, the impact that we could have in a number of ways, both for, um, for our residents at, 
at the properties. You know, a lot of our properties are 75 to 125 units. And, you know, we do a lot of things like a resident events, you know, we have back to school nights and if there's like families there, you know, we give away backpacks or we do like a fall festival and we really try to, to build community and make it a home more so than just, you know, a roof over, over people's heads. And, you know, talking about my, my network, about 75% of, of my investors right now are uh, associated with the military. They're either still in active duty, um, maybe they're retired or transfer, you know, DOD contractors now, government civilians. But at some point in time, I connected with them through my service or have been referred to and connected through others and stuff as well. And so I think for me, that's like a, there's a lot of personal satisfaction in that. Um, I think that, you know, some, a lot of my investors are still active duty stationed in Japan or Germany or, you know, different places throughout the world. And so whether they, they might be very busy, you know, still have that W2, that military job and don't necessarily have the time to, you know, to look for the deals, to analyze the deals, to, you know, become more of the real estate expert. Uh, perhaps some of them have other ambitions and not, they want exposure from a, a, a investment perspective to real estate, but don't necessarily want to dedicate the time, uh, you know, to be the active, active partner. And so over the past couple of years, it's just, you know, it's brought me a lot of uh, selfishly, a lot of pers personal satisfaction uh, to be able to, to share that opportunity. And, you know, there's a lot of educators in my family, um, my parents and aunts and uncles and cousins and sisters and everyone else. And I think a part of that has kind of, um, while I never, you know, professionally was a teacher necessarily in a school system, uh, I think there's still part of that in my blood, you know, and I love to, to teach and educate and share these opportunities with, uh, with my network. I love that you brought education into this because that's what we do as people who raise capital, as people who uplift our network and and bring opportunities to others. One of our first things we need to do is to educate. And I also loved how you said you had the selfish satisfa that satisfaction in getting to help others. And if, if anyone's going to be selfish about something, I think getting satisfaction Selfish satisfaction by helping others is the best selfishness that anyone can have. So thank you for sharing that, Marcus. Absolutely. Now, Marcus, I want to transition into your role within Seven Figure Multifamily as a coach. How have you been able to help us over at Seven Figure Multifamily and how have you been able to grow while assisting? Yeah, I think that's, you know, great on both points. Like, you know, how am I able to help? You know, so we, as some of the coaches, you know, are available, um, throughout the week for one-on-one -on -one calls with some of the other, the other members. And well, you know, we could talk about a variety of, of topics around multifamily, you know, a few of us have like specialties that we kind of help with. And I think it's really good for the other members and having been a recipient in the past of, of laser coaching and some of that as well. Like sometimes uh, certainly hopefully we can protect a little bit of your all's time because you all do provide a lot of uh, individual attention and stuff. And as the group grows and stuff, it, that becomes uh, harder to do. So hopefully we can protect your all's time a little bit too, but uh, members and stuff. Sometimes we need to hear things multiple times. Uh, sometimes we need to hear things from a, a different perspective or a different voice, right? So uh, you and I can say practically the same thing to the same person, uh, maybe in the same words, maybe in different words, maybe with a different tone. And, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't click from one person and it does from the other and stuff. And so uh, hopefully, you know, when they, they kind of hear this, or sometimes we hear something from one person and we're kind of like, you know, just kind of let it pass on. But when we hear that two times or three times, we're like, okay, there's something to this and that like repetitiveness uh, of that. And so um, hopefully through that, you know, been able to uh, help some of these other members along on their journey. And certainly the experience of being able to coach has helped me uh, as well, much like, you know, talking with investors and, you know, the questions, like the more times you are on the phone with investors and answer their questions. And, you know, maybe you hear a question that you haven't been asked before, or maybe someone has a, a different situation that you haven't been approached with before. Uh, that's same. That's very similar with some of the other members who are trying to, uh, you know, become general partners and invest actively in multifamily as well. Maybe maybe different questions, maybe uh, similar to our investors, but it helps me grow and learn and uh, do a lot more critical thinking, right? Because I hear new questions and and you know get questions that you know if someone's a financial planner, how do they raise capital and stuff and like things that maybe I didn't have to to deal with myself. Um, and it just helps me become a better investor and hopefully a better, you know, um, you know, sponsor for my investors and stuff as well. 
The thing is, I completely receive and I completely um, agree with everything you said about coaching, because I think, and I know we've had this conversation before, because we are both capital raisers. We both love that aspect of of multifamily, of bringing and um, taking down and and acquiring deals. It's the part where we get to help the most people come into the deal and experience what it feels like to have passive income and being able to, and you already mentioned this, educate, but as being a coach, like I can say one thing and I've, and I, and I've seen this happen. I've seen this happen. I've had coaching uh, times with our members where they're like, Hey, Marcus said that. I was like, yeah, you should probably listen to him. (laughs) He knows what he's saying. (laughs) <laughs> so Marcus, it has been a pleasure to have it, to have you on this show. Um, it has been a pleasure to be coaching with you and to have you as part of the seven figure multifamily family. Before I let you go, is there anything else you want to share with our audience about what you're doing and what you're doing into the future? Yeah, right now, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of this transition and very, very happy with the way it's going, like with multifamily and, you know, helping my investors and stuff and anyone that that does know me knows that my, like my kids uh, are really important, a part of that and a part of the, you know, my journey. And one, one thing I really enjoy about what I'm doing is, you know, um, you don't always get to take them with you on a, a W2 and stuff like that, but I get to take them, you know, when we go look at properties or, um, and just trying to expose them and, and inform them and teach them at a young age and uh, just really encourage others uh, to kind of consider that and, and uh, share, share this journey with their children and stuff as well. And, if I can be a, you know, a, a resource, both for children, for multifamily, for anything else, um, I would love, you know, people to reach out to me and, and connect and happy to help them in any way I can. Where can people reach out to you? Yeah, they can go to uh, longlegacy.com and all my contact, uh, set up a, a phone call, shoot me an email, my social media, uh, all that stuff is, is on there, longlegacy.com. Fantastic. And that that website should be down in the notes as well. Thank you again, Marcus. And thank you to everyone who's listened today. I am so very grateful. I hope you have a day filled with aloha, filled with love, filled with peace. And I'll talk to you later. Aloha.